specifically to him. The psalm, the book from him would be for 100 psalms. Before I read this, because I was listening to him, praise the Lord with us, to him. Um, I was thinking about how God wants us to focus our attention on him. That's right. Have you ever gone to a movie and you go to a theater and you, your favorite film is there? And in the, the movie, they don't want you walking and talking and nobody passing over you. So they want your attention directly on you want to pay attention to the movie. That's right. And that's how God wants us to get all our minds away from out there and come before him and let us let him revive us. And that's right. Amen. Speak to us today. Yes, and have a joyous time while we're in, together in, in his presence. Yes, sir. The song says, the writer says, I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve him with gladness. And come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and we are ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and unto his court with giving me with praise to to thank y'all have to excuse me because these glasses but I I'm supposed to going to the doctor this, this month to get my eyes together. And not that I don't know the word get with thanksgiving and unto his court with praise to put to be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord he is good and mercy and his, his everlasting and, and his truth endureth to all generations. He say we come to the Lord and bless him, the reading and hearing and doing of his word. Amen. Amen.
each and every one continue to pray. And yes, keep the faith and be faithful Thank to the good Lord that he will get the glory of God in our lives. Okay. Amen, amen. I just want to thank you, Lord. Amen. He saved our soul. Amen. He made us whole. Amen. We ought to be thankful about it. Amen. Amen. Despite everything that's going on around us, amen, God is still good. Amen. Amen. And you ought to have a thank you, Lord. Amen. On your lips. Amen. 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 When you... Your eyes fly open in the moment. That ought to be the first thing you want to say. Thank you, Lord. You didn't have to wake me up, but you did anyway. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And then ask him to fill you with his spirit. Amen. So that you can live for him that day. Amen. That's important. We can't live the Christian life without the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to, you know, we, 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 we receive the Holy Spirit when we get saved. But there's a difference from the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. That's why Paul tells us to be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. In other words, be under the control or the influence of the Spirit. Every day when you wake up in the morning, have that conversation with God. Say, Lord, fill me today. So I can live a life that pleases you today. Yeah. Amen? Amen? That's if you want to do it. Now, if you don't want to do it, that's don't, you don't have to do it. But if you want to live a life that pleases God, ask Him to fill you with His Spirit. Before we pick up our uh, collection, I want to uh, present these Bibles uh, to these two young ladies, our newest uh, members of the church. Sister Ayla. And Abel, right? Yes. That's right. Sister Abel and Abel. Y'all come on. Right? I don't want, when I take the text, I don't want y'all not to have it in your hands. Amen. And look, I, this, 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 I want to make sure I'm giving it to the right person. Sister Abel. I was giving it to the right person. Okay, that's your Bible. Make sure you don't forget it when you know you come to church. Right. I want you to follow along. Get into the habit of following along Amen. in your Bible. And your dad already told me, Sister Ayla, he already told me that y'all have y'all little devotion to time. So mm -hmm. y'all got y'all Bibles. You can follow along as he leads uh, the family devotion. God bless y'all and I'll be praying for y'all yes. on this Christian journey. Y'all young now. And you know, y'all don't know all that entails. But as you look into the word of God, God will do the rest. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's get ready to uh, thank God for our gifts that he has given us that we have presented back to him. Amen. I trust that when you came in, if you haven't, uh, You'll be glad to come and get it. Amen. This giving is a, is a part of worship. Uh, as I told you, your sacrifice is not a sacrifice. You have a sacrifice. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Some, some of y'all will get that when you get home. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you once again for the privilege of being able to Give back to you a portion of that which you have given unto us. For we know, Lord, that if you don't bless us, we can't be a blessing. Lord, we know you own a cattle on a thousand hills. All the silver and the gold belongs to you. You say it in your word, it is the Lord that gives you the power to get wealth. And so, Lord, we know that everything that we give comes back, comes from you. And so, Lord, thank you for not only giving us the, the means and the substance, but, Lord, you even place the desire and the willingness in each and every individual heart 
Lord, bless those who gave joyfully and cheerfully. You say you love a cheerful giver. Bless this offering. Make it more than enough. Bless those who had it in their heart to give, but not to be. And Lord, bless those who are struggling with the idea of giving. Bless them with the desire and the heart. Treat this offering as you did the two fish and five barley loaves. Father, make it more than enough. This is the precious, marvelous masters and highly exalted name of Jesus the Christ. We do pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 We want to have a couple of more songs. Uh, from the praise team. Uh, and then after that, I want you to meet me in Revelation chapter 3, uh, verse 21. We're still looking at uh, overcoming as Jesus overcame. We're, we're, we're looking at that, being an overcomer. That if we follow in Christ, then we need to aim at being everything that he is. Because that's the only sure way a only guarantee way you know you're going to get in. You ain't got to wonder, you ain't got to guess. If you follow in Christ, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. If you follow in Christ, you don't have a thing to be concerned about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, uh, praise team.
for somebody else. And Jesus is the only person, amen, who came into the world with the specific purpose of dying. He came here for that reason, to die, so that many, amen, can be saved from uh, the powers of death. Amen. And that's what's important. That's what makes uh, the Resurrection Sunday so important. Uh, the one thing that man is, is, is terribly afraid of is death. And, 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 and he, did, he didn't just die uh, from physical death. Now physical death gives us a, a glimpse and a picture uh, of what spiritual death is. Uh, remember that death is always separation. Yes, yes. That's what it is. So physical death, physical, don't, don't miss this, physical death is not the penalty for sin because we all going to die physically. So when he died physical death, that was partial, that was part of it because God can't die. And the only way Jesus was able to die, he had to become a man. But he not only died physically for you and I, but he died spiritually. When he was separated from the fall on the cross for three long hours, when he was forsaken by God, in that instance, amen, he died. And let me show you something. Uh, spiritual death don't mean you cease to, to exist. It don't mean that. It just means you're separated from the source of all life. People, that's what, they, that's what the Bible calls the second death. Spiritual death, when they're cast into the lake of fire, they're, they still exist. They're still alive. But they're spiritually dead. Don't forget that. It always means separation. When you leave from this world, that's what that is. Separation. The separation of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Each one, of those, each one of those entities are going back where they came from, except one, and that's the soul. The soul is going to go to either, they got, see, see, some people don't understand, they got two parts of, of, of Hades, or what some people call hell. Hell in the King James Version is erroneously translated Hades. But Hades is a, is, a, is a place of departed spirits. They got two places. They got paradise, and they got another part called Tutorah. Tutorah is where the wicked dead go. Paradise, that's another word they call it, uh, Abraham bosom. That's where the, the, the saved departed rests until the resurrection. Notice Jesus said he's going to descend from heaven with a shout, right? With the trump of God and the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ gonna go up. What? They're gonna get up first. Where you think they at? They're in a resting place. They're in a resting place called paradise or, or Abraham's bosom until Jesus descends from heaven with a shout. Now the other dead, the ones that's not saved, they're in the other part of Hades, which is called Tutorah. And when you read the when you read the book of of, of Luke, I'm telling y'all now, when you read the book of Luke, Jesus gives you a vivid picture where the people who are in Tutoro, that part of Hades, can see across that great gulf and see the ones in Abraham's bosom. Y'all read that? Y'all saw that? I preached on that enough time for you to be able to see that picture. They, they can see each other. They can't cross over. One of them is a place of torment. That's Tutoro. And the other one is paradise, or what some Jews call Abraham's bosom. That's what Jesus called it. He called it Abraham's bosom, but it's really a, 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 a metaphoric word for uh, paradise. I didn't want to throw that in there. That's not part of the sermon. The sermon is in the second chapter of, uh, of Revelation here. I just want to enlighten some people. You know, when you do some, when you do some, uh, when you go past surface Bible study, you learn those things. There's two, two, two levels of Bible study. There's surface Bible study, and there's deep, penetrating Bible study. That's when you, 
That's sometimes you gotta reach in your pocket and your wallet, your purse, if you're a woman, your wallet if you're a man. Sometimes in order to go deep, you gotta dig in your pocket. In other words, you gotta buy some stuff. Because you ain't gonna just get it from a regular good Bible. You gotta dig. You gotta pry. You gotta investigate. You gotta do all that. You know, and then you don't have to, you know, preacher to do that, because I, I, that brother right there, since I've been there, I've learned he, he, he's not a surface, he's not a surface, uh, he's not a surface study, and he's not a preacher, but he, 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 I, I didn't, we have had some conversations, I know he deep, I'm looking at another brother who sitting right here on the front, uh, brother Clinton, he's not a surface study, we've had some conversations, that, that, that I've able to arrive at the conclusion that, that he, he digs. And there's some sisters I've heard and talked to that I'm under the, and that I've discovered that they, they, they don't, they, their studies is just not confined to the church walls. They, they take their studies home with them because they're curious, they want to know. My wife, my wife, my wife, I know before we even married, I knew that she was not just a uh, surface, surface uh, uh, or casual uh, study, of, study of God's word. Look at the third chapter of, uh, of, of, of Revelation. And one thing I know, if you love God and you really want to please him, and you really want to make sure you, the scripture says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you study yourself, nobody can't come to you with no foolishness. Nobody can't trick you up into believing something that's false. Amen? Amen. Revelation. Now, this got one, one verse I'm going to look at, and that's what we're going to take our study from. Uh, this, 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 this overcoming thing is so important to God that he has me now teaching it in Bible study. And in Bible study, you're able to get more than you can at church. But I'm teaching that I started the first installation of it Wednesday in Bible study. Look at it, it says, to him that overcoming will I grant to what? Sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and then sat down with my father in his throne. You may take your seats. That's the picture. Sitting on a throne is a picture of, is a, if, if sitting on a throne ruling is one of the most triumphant pictures that an individual could ever find themselves in. Sit there. And when he said, and, and let me show you something, the reason why the, these individuals can sit triumphantly because they, they, that's what they ruled over first, their own will. They took their own will and brought it into subjection to the will of God. You cannot rule nothing if you can't take care of your own self. If you can't rule your tongue, what you say out your mouth, how you gonna rule something else? If you can't rule your, your nature, and when I say nature, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all grown folks know exactly what I'm talking about. If you can't control your nature, you can't control it. You, you, let me show you something. A person, the only person, only creatures that God made that should, that got to do what their nature say do is animals. We humans, we're different from animals, so we don't have to do everything our nature tell us. We don't have to do that. We don't have to do everything our nature. We have the ability to reason. We're what you call volitional creatures, creatures that's able to make informed decisions. We're able to do that. So we shouldn't be doing everything our, our nature tells us to do. Now, if you can take control over your nature, you overcome. 
If you can take control over your mind, you will overcome. If you, if you can take control over your thoughts, you are overcoming. You, you, you don't, let me show you something. You don't have control over what comes in there in your thoughts, but you got control over what you meditate or imagine or what you allow to stay there. You got control over that. You can expel out of your, I'm gonna show it to you. Go to, go to, go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm gonna show it to you. I want you to see it. Put your eyeballs on it. I want you to see it. Don't let nobody say, oh, I, 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 you know, I can't stop from thinking like that. That's, that's not true. Chapter 10. Look at, beginning at verse number, uh, excuse me. Look at verse number three. Second Corinthians, verse number three says, For though we walk in the flesh, we don't walk or fight after the flesh. Y'all see that? For the weapons of our warfare, what are they? They are spiritual. You see that? For the weapons of our warfare are not come, but mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Stronghold. What's a stronghold? That's something, that's, a stronghold is a, is a, is a, a habit. Some habit that the devil allowed you to get some, so it can, it can be a, a simple habit that may not be sinful in and of itself. But you could be overtaken by it, like a gambling habit or, 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 or a shopping habit or something of, of that nature. A gossiping habit, talking about people tight headed, is a stronghold. Look what he said, dude. Casting down imagination. Now, imagination is a thing that, that has graduated from being a thought. You, a, a imagination is a thought that you allow to meander through your mind unchecked. That's what imagination is. It's to, it's to sit there and drool over. Mentally, something that, a, that that was once a thought, you got the power to get it out of there. You got the power to, to ask the Lord to rebuke that temptation, whether it's a, a sexual temptation, whether it's a, a, a temptation to to uh, to lie, a temptation to steal, or a temptation to do anything that's considered sin. But He said, cast down. Imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And what you do, you take that thought and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness, verse number six, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, when, you, when your obedience is fulfilled, you want to ask for forgiveness for it. And you want to repent of it, and you want to make sure you, if you, if you whatever you got to do to set it right, that's what you want to do. You want to try to set it right. But let me tell you something. You, I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. You have the ability to cast whatever thoughts that come into your mind out of it. You, let me show you how powerful you, your mind is. You got to you got the authority to cast out good stuff out your mind. Something God wants you to do. You can ignore that. So if you can ignore something God wants you to do, you know God well. I want to say another word, but you know God well. If you can extract something God wants you to do out of your mind, you can extract the wrong stuff. Yeah. Out of your mind. God tell you to put a certain amount of money in there. You say, oh no, that ain't God talking, that's the devil. Because <laughs> if I put that much in there, I ain't gonna have no money. <laughs> you you, you, you charge a thought that God put on your mind to the devil and say, oh no, I ain't gonna put that, I'm gonna put a quarter of that amount. But if you can if you can disobey a thought from God, what makes you think you can, can't disobey a thought from the devil? You can do that. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody now. And see, that's, that's one of the keys to living an overcoming life. Because the battle starts right here. The devil watched every one of us. He got imps, demons, everywhere watching you. 
and he know exactly what you like. He can't read your mind, but he know what you like. He know what I like. He know exactly what Kenny Charles saw never seen in your life. And he know exactly how to push the right buttons. But it's up to me to put him in check. I got the power to put him in check. You got it. But let me show you. Notice, notice what he said, yo. Notice what he said, the main equipment in this wall. Look at, look at, look at, look at the main equipment here. In this wall. We're talking about giving you tools to overcome. I'm giving you tools to be able to overcome. I don't care what your habit is. It could be pornography. It could be gambling. It could be whatever it is. I used to be a gambling hall. You and let me let me tell you something. That's one of the hardest addictions to get rid of. Especially if you make money and it's your own money. The first thing you say, this is my money. I don't care what they say. I ain't here. I'm spending my money. I work for this money. That's what you say. And anybody who tells you something, the first thing you tell them, I, I, am I, did I borrow anything from you? <laughs> did I gamble any of your down there at the boat? But what you talking about? You know? And eventually, it, 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 it's going to overwhelm you. You're going to be, you're going to be gambling the light bill money, <laughs> car note money, insurance money, rent money. Tell me, you're gonna be putting it in there. You're gonna be, you gonna, I gotta hit this big one. I got well, if you go to the casino and you got to win, you ain't got no business going. <laughs> if you got to win. Now if you win, you go in and you lose anybody, man, you go on because it's a, I guess you consider it recreation. It might be that to you. If you could you, you know, it don't bother you. If you lose, that's not the rent money, that's not the Light like bill money, not none of that ain't gonna set you, they ain't gonna put your account in the negative and all that kind of stuff. Then you, 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 and then it's not a real habit, you all right, you just down there having fun, because that's all it is, a recreational play. But if you go down there <laughs> with, the, with it on your mind, I got to win. I got $1,000, $1,200, 1500 I got it in my pocket, I got to flip this. You, 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 you. You ain't that. You should. You, you should. You should be going the opposite direction. You should be going the opposite direction. Just saying that. Not just that. But you got. You got. Let me show you something. You got the power to rebuke that thought. Thanks the Lord. Lord, rebuke this gown in heaven. Rebuke this. 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 This girl I'm crazy about. That ain't my wife. Or this guy I'm crazy about. That ain't my love. Lord, rebuke the thought of me meeting with them. Or Texting with them or talking with them. You know, I, 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 I'm speaking about some real life situations. Lord, rebuke the Lord. Help me to block them in my phone or on Facebook or Instagram or however they're contacting you. Lord, help me to block them. They ain't right. You know, you, you, you got to make that up in your mind. You got to do that. You got the power to block whatever it is. That's troubling you. Look, look what he said. This is what you need. This is what you need. Verse number five. He said, cast down every high thing that exalts itself above what? The knowledge of God. See, if you don't have no knowledge of what God's standard is, if you don't have a knowledge of what pleases and what displeases God, how are you going to know what to cast down? How are you going to know what, what to reject? How you gonna know it? See, you gotta be able to know what you need to reject. I know what I need to reject when stuff come in my head. Foolish stuff, dumb stuff, stuff that come from, and you know, the, the stronger you get in the word, the devil ain't gonna be able to come at you straight forward. He gonna have to come a little slide, a little innocent way. He gonna try to come at you through a little innocent way. You see what I'm saying? Like he did Eve. He didn't, he didn't come straight at Eve and tell Eve, God, let me tell you something. Don't believe that fools and God talk about you. You, 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 eating the, you know, you can't eat that. He didn't come straight at her like that. He just came at a slide, in a slide way and got her talking about it. And that's how the devil do it. He, he's crafty. He's cunning. 
He sold the way he come. And don't think you slicker than him. Don't think, because he's been doing that for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. If he got angels that was already seeing the face of God to, to, to rebel against God, you ain't saw God yet. What makes you think he can't trick you? Huh? These angels were perfect in the presence of God. Saw God. No God is real. The Bible says that they believe and they tremble. So that means they know God is real. They have physical encounters with God. We walk in by faith. They don't need to walk by faith. They know God exists. They saw him. We have evidences of God, and the main evidence you have if you say it is that his Holy Spirit is in you, enabling you to live a victorious life. Jesus said, he that overcomes as I overcame. Now the question is, do you want to be an overcomer? Because let me tell you something, if you don't want to be an overcomer over this world, as Jesus overcame this world, then nothing that you hear about overcoming going to work. You got to want to. It, it has to be your desire. You may not know everything. You may not have all the equipment that you need to do it. But you, the question is, do you want to? And God can work with my want to. He can work with my desire. Because if I desire it, he's going to give me everything I need to do it. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Matter of fact, let me show it to you in the Bible. Go, I want, put, want you to put your eyeballs on it. 1 Peter. Huh? Chapter, right there, chapter 9. Go to 1 Peter. I want y'all to see something in 1 Peter. No, I love it. Second piece, second piece, my baby. First chapter, second piece. I want you to see something. Everything you need to live the way God wants you to live. See, that's the thing about it. He tells you what he wants you to do, then he gives you what you need to do. Everything you need to live the way God wants you to live. See, that's the thing about it. He tells you what he wants you to do, then he gives you the equipment. Nobody's going to be able to stand before God with an excuse. Nobody. He gives you, he, look, he, he, let me show you how awesome our God is. He gave us the word. Then he said, hold up, that, that ain't enough. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me, let me do better than that. Let me get dressed in the flesh. Put on the flesh and came down here and lived the word. Everything he asked you and I to do, he got dressed up in the human body and he did it for you and I. What excuse we gonna have? I'm afraid none. Ain't no excuses. The Bible says the word became flesh and brought the mothers and we beheld his glory. That's in John chapter number one. Am I right? Amen. We beheld his glory. Look what he says to Paul through Peter. Peter speaking from experience and speaking through the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, chapter 1, 2 Peter. Look what he says. Chapter 1, 2 Peter. Look what he said. Grace, peace, and multiply. I'm in verse 2. Grace, peace, be multiplied in you through the knowledge of the Lord of our God, Jesus Christ. Only way you can have this grace and peace is through the knowledge. Look what he said in verse number 3. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everything you need to live the Christian life. The life that God called for. A godly life. Look what he said. He gave it to us, right? Through his divine, divine power, through the knowledge of him that had called us to what? Glory and virtue. Virtue, virtue, virtue simply means moral excellence. That's what he called us to. Living morally excellent. Look what verse number four says. Well, I are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. And let me show you something. This, 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 how, you, this, how, you, some, this how you activate on that. That by these you might be what? Partakers of what? His divine nature. Divine, that's, that has to do with God. When you talk about the divine, you're talking about God. 
he allowed you and I, when we get saved, to become partakers of his divine nature. That's the Holy Spirit indwelling in the believer. But you have to, let me share something. See, we inherited, we inherited our sin nature. Well, same way, when you get saved, you inherit God's divine nature. You, you become a partaker of it. That's part of your inheritance as a result of being a child of God. So if you want to be a child of God, you got to follow the script. Look what he says here. He says, we, we partake of the divine nation, and, and as, a, as, a, as a result of that, having escaped, escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It's saying that we, we have the ability, we have the power. Some of us have, and some of us are still struggling. But you're able, you're equipped to escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. You have the ability to rise above the world system. You have the ability to be in the world, but not of it. I'm in the world, but I ain't of it. I ain't following everything that they follow. I ain't, I ain't caught up in that bank that thing up and shake your fans and, and, and all that kind of stuff, the clubs and and, 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 and all, I'm not caught up in all that. Not caught up in getting drunk, tore up from the flow of. I, I'm not caught up in that. I ain't caught up in heroin and cocaine and weed. I don't know what kind of weed that is they got today. When I was young like that, I, I, I don't even know how to, you know, you experiment as a kid. But these folks today, they smoke all day. What kind of weed that is that you can smoke it all day? When I was coming up, you couldn't smoke that weed no all day. You had a little bit of little thing that rolled up to a piece of paper like that, about that long, and you hit it, you gave it to him, he hit it, and you gave it to him, and he hit it. Three of y'all was high all day off of that little bit of thing. How y'all can smoke weed all day? What kind of weed y'all smoking? They might be smoking parsley. <laughs> that was they smoke of bay leaves or something like that. That ain't no weed y'all smoke. What's wrong with these cats today? And then they take it, they ain't got no little bit of one now. They got a big old cigar. They done took it and put in a big old fat cigar and be sitting around smoking it all day. And that stuff got some stinky smell to it. And if they, they, they smoke it and they call it, you gonna smell it when you pull it. You, when they let the window down, you gonna smell it. You gonna say, boy, it's blowing in there. They might, they might ain't smoking three hours. But when they let that window down, you gonna say, well, y'all blowing in there. It's gonna be just like they just was blowing. I'm telling you. Them knuckleheads, look, they can come out their house from blowing. They can come out their house from blowing. They ain't blowing in your car. You pick them up. And they got in there, you in there riding with the window down, you can drop them off where they coming and you go pick somebody else up, they gonna jump in there and say, man, you been going out here? <laughs> you ain't smoke that weed, but the person you just had up in there. That's how nasty it's spread. People know, you're blowing. But I'm, I'm saying that to say this, you can overcome that. You can overcome that. You don't have to succumb to that. Look what he said. Look what Peter said. I'm going to try to get out of here over this here. Look what he said. He said, you escape the corruption in the world through lust. And he said, and beside this, beside being, uh, besides having been a partaker of the divine nature, besides that, and this is the stuff that comes along with that. Look what he said. Besides this, giving all diligence, he said, add to your faith more excellence. He, he, you, you got that. That's it. That when you indwell with the Holy Spirit, God teaches you that. Look what he said. Add to your, your, add to your moral actions, add knowledge. That means you're going to be Bible studying. You can't get knowledge. And I'm, I, and I'm not just making a case to come to Bible study. I, I, wish, I wish everybody on the church road would show up. But I'm not making a, I, I want you to come. I want you to come to Sunday school. But I also need you to study at your house. Man. I need you to do that. 
God needs you to study. Let me tell you something. You need you to study. More than anything else, you need you to study. You need that. And make write your questions down. If you got any, I'll do my best to deal with them. Look what he said. Add to your knowledge temperance. See, you can't become temperate. You can't exercise self-control if you don't know what you need to be controlled from. So you need knowledge first. That's what temperance is. Temperance is self-control. And that's, that's what a lot of us have. We don't have self-control. We got self-control problems. Seriously, in, in a whole lot of areas of our life. Not just, not just uh, 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 promiscuity. I'm going to use that word there. Uh, not just that. Not just in, 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 in relationship matters. But, but we, 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 we don't have self-control when it comes to money. When it comes to our money, we don't have self-control. We don't have self-control over eating. I, I got to say ouch for that. <laughs> I got to say ouch. Ouch! The more I can eat. I know I can. I, I'm, not, I'm fighting now. I'm fighting now. But I'm talking about self-control. Temperance. That's what temperance is. Some of us don't have self-control over, over our speech. You need self-control over your thoughts. I just showed you. You got control over your thoughts. And you don't control when thoughts come, but you control when thoughts graduate to the imagination. Amen. You can stop that. I'm trying to help somebody. I know some of y'all, y'all ain't heard it before. I'm showing it to you in the word. I'm trying to help equip you to be a person that overcomes like Jesus. Overcame. I'm trying to help you do that. I'm teaching you some practical things that will help you when you're not at church. Because let me tell you something. The most important day is not Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the most important day. It's easy for you to put on your Christian outfit and mind and brain and, and speech for two hours. Anybody can do that. The devil can come sit up and yell and act like he's a believer. He can do it. The real days is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's the real days. That's who you is. You really are. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's who you really are. And guess who get to see who you really are? Your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your sisters and brother people you're around when you're not at church. They get to see the real you. And the question is, when they see you, what do they see? If, if you allow them to evaluate you by what the book said, will the end result be a person striving to be like Christ? Can they put that in the blank? Can your wife say you strive? Can your husband say you strive? Can your son, can your daughter, can your niece, can your nephew, can your grandbabies, can they say my mom or my daddy, my uncle, my brother, can they say you striving to be like Christ? Man. Can they say that? Man. Or, can, or do they have to say no, they ain't striving, that's a hypocrite. That's an actor, that's what hypocrite means. Actor. That's what they are. They're not a Christian. They acting. And Christ was hard on them. Christ was hard, Christ was hard on hypocrites and, and uh, prostitutes and publicans and sinners. He was hard on hypocrites. He called them tombs, empty graves. He talked bad about them. them he, he said they were going to hell. He said, "You make a. He said, you go. You try. You travel earth and sea to make one proselyte or, or, or convert and make them twofold a child of hell. Then what you is? He said that about the hypocrite, the Pharisee. He called them hypocrites. And you don't want. That's the worst thing you can be a hypocrite. You don't want to be that. The question is when they, when when your mama, or your sister, or whoever it is that that sees you Monday through Saturday." What, what if they had to grade you and evaluate you and you ought to be able to be evaluated and graded? 
What do they say? You think? Or do they say you, 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 a, a believer, strive to live this overcoming life. What time we got? What time it is? I know it's good and some folks don't pay much attention no time. Huh? 1057. I know it's good and some of us don't want to, you know, what time I know we stuff? We start at 945. I said, i try that without you by 11, right? So I know it's good. I mean, is it good? Yeah. Am I helping somebody? Yeah. Now, I don't, I don't take advantage of y'all saying it's good. Now, I'm just trying to help some people. Now. Trying to help them. But look what he said. Look what he said here. He says, he says, he said, he said, add temperance to it. Y'all see that? To your knowledge. To, once you get the information of what you need to, 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 to deal with, what you need to, 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 to have control over, he said, add to that knowledge self-control. Control. If you know, if you know you got a bad mouth, you need to quit talking like that in some people. And let me tell y'all something. I cussing folk ain't the only way you get it so. They got some folks that chew you up and spit you out and won't say their cuss word. So I'm not just talking to people that just cuss. I'm talking to rude folks. If you know you really know, they got some folks, they pride themselves on uh, being sarcastic. You ever met a person like that? They always suck. They always, that's a person, I'm going to tell you, see a person with their attitude, and I hope I ain't talking about nobody in here, boy. But see a person with that attitude where they always want to be sarcastic? That person has what is called insecurity issues. They feel the need to put people down or to make people look smaller than them because that they 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 insecure about who they are. But when you're confident in who you are, you won't do that. You won't try to be. I got I got some relatives. I got a, I got a cousin like that. She's not aware of it. She's a believer too. She's not aware of it, but she's always sarcastic. Duh. You know, like, 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 you're supposed to know everything. You know, like, like, you might, like, you might say, uh, you might say, you might say, well, that, you know, that's a nice, that's a nice little car there, man. Uh, 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 uh you like, you look nice. That's yeah, what makes you think I don't want to look nice. You know, something like that. You compliment them or something like that. They, they just sarcastic about everything. They're always trying to twist something to make it look like you, you ain't, you know, you make people look at you negative. And so they, they need self-control, dealing with that. All of us need some form of self-control. Right. We need self-control in, in a lot of areas. But he said, add to your knowledge, temperance, and add to your self-control, patience. That means the ability to endure hardship without giving in, without making wrong decisions. Endure hardship. Don't get, don't panic because the bill coming up and run over there and borrow from the payday people. I did that before, boy. <laughs> don't do that. It's been many years since I've done it. I remember I had about three of them at one time. So I'm, if the pastor telling you he he, he had been there, done that, got the t shirt. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm trying to help you. Amen. Wait on God. God will God get you, he'll get it to you where you won't owe nobody no money. You know, he'll, get, he'll help you out where you ain't got to have them people calling your number. And then when they can't get you, they call them your auntie who number you put on there to talk to. <laughs> call them your auntie. Do you know so-and-so, so-and-so? How can we get in touch with them? They got a payday loan here that's six months past due. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience, man. I'm telling you, you got to have self-control and you got to have patience. In order to, let me show you something, in order to have self-control, you need patience with it. Because you can't control yourself. God, let me tell you something, everything you learn, God is going to test you with it. A lot of you be tested. Just, to, just, just he knows you got it. Just to see, so you can see whether I'm weak or strong. Be real with yourself. When you fail, you need to be mad. 
with yourself, not, not with the tempter, man with yourself, and be ready next time to, 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 to overcome that. The word overcome, that's a, it's a, it's a, it, it comes from the Greek word katavela. It means to, to overwhelm. It means to prevail. It has several meanings. It means to, to, uh, to predominate. It means a few things. It means victory. That's what it means. And, 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 and Paul, Paul speaking prophetically about all the church members in Romans, he said we are more than conquerors. Nah, 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 nah. Put your, put your name in that sentence. Instead of we, put your name there. Are you, be honest with yourself. Are you more than a conqueror? Or are you defeated? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Am I defeated? Am I, am I, am I, or am I overcome? Am, am I eligible to sit with Jesus at his throne? As he overcame and sat at the throne of his day. Am I or, or, or am I striving? That's the thing. Do I want to first? And let me, let me add to my want to. Am I striving to be overcome? Ask yourself that. Only person can answer that for you is you. Nobody else can answer that. Do you want to be overcome? And are you striving to be one? And let me tell you something, overcome, a person that wants to overcome, he wants to learn what I need to overcome. He's going to be seeking and searching. Because let me tell you something, you, 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 the only one God is, 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 is looking for is those who, who set pleasing him as their top priority. Now, you're not just sitting here, oh, I'm saved, I, I'm going to heaven, my sins are forgiven. You, you, that's all you're concerned about. You have not put a bullseye on pleasing God. That's, that, you need to put a bullseye on that. Pleasing God. Not that oh, I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. You know, that, not just that. I want to please God. That's what I want to do. Do you want to go to heaven and live with, with the person you ain't strived to please? How you gonna feel up there in heaven walking around if you get there? How you how I'm gonna feel? I mean, I'm gonna take it off. How I'm gonna feel walking around heaven and I ain't striving to please God. I just I just wanted to go to heaven. I didn't want to go to hell. That's it. I'm up there. I'm, I'm satisfied. My sins are forgiven. I'm sad. I, I don't need. I don't have to please Him. I don't have to be involved with Him or none of that. I'm just up here in heaven. They got a lot of folks that they don't get there like that. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You're not going if you're not. You got to be a person. Your top priority is what God thinks about you, not nobody else. That's your top priority. That's what I, every day I strive to, to examine kids. I don't examine nobody else because I don't know where you are with God. I don't have a clue of where individuals are. I can look at some things and come up with a, a ballpark picture of where a person, a person at, but only God knows every heart in here. Yeah. God's the only one know. He knows they got the devil know the Bible. So 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 people knowing the word is not a clear indication. Now, 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 you got them living the word and knowing the word, then you, 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 they, then you, you can be pretty sure that they're close. You can be pretty sure that they're close. And as I close, look what he said. I'm going to close. I'm, I'm not going to finish it here. But he, he said, add to your patience godliness. That means, that means God-like living. Living holy. Holy is a, holiness is a learned behavior. And I'm, I'm reminded of a, a hymn that, that they used to say, that, 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 that uh, an older hymn that some of y'all, uh, uh, matter of fact, I heard Sister, I don't know if it was Sister uh, Brandy or Sister Henrietta or something uh, last year sometime, maybe before that. Uh, I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned how to suffer. And then the hymn 
everybody say, when I see Jesus, it's going to be amen. Amen. Now, that, 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 that was the, that was, that's the, that's the, that's the motivating factor for living holy. That's the motivating factor for living right. That's the motivating factor for being able to suffer because you want to see Jesus. And then let me tell you something. If you want to see Jesus, live holy. Live right. Learn how to suffer as a child of God without all that complaining and crying and whining and doing stuff that you ain't got no business doing. You suffering and God uses suffering to perfect our character. Learn how to suffer. Now let me show you something. God can stop whatever suffering you endure. He can stop it. You don't need to go through it. He can stop it. But if he don't stop it, that means it had his permission to come into your life and you need to learn how to deal with it as a child of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to learn how to do with it. Because the hip writer says, when I see Jesus, amen. it's going to be amen. amen. All of my heartaches, yeah. all of my suffering, all of my pain, all of my disappointment, it's going to be over. Yeah. Down here. When I see Jesus, when I see the one who died for me, the one who hung bread on Calvary, I, it, it's going to be amen. Amen. I'm not going to have to suffer no more. All I got to do is endure whatever I have to endure right here on earth for a season. That's all it is. It's a season. It, 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 it's temporary. That's all it is. It's going to be amen. amen. Everything's going to be over. Yeah. You ain't going to have to fight whatever it is, temptation. You ain't going to have to fight that no more. Because the Bible says the, the, the wicked going to cease from trouble. Yeah. Iniquity will not rise up a second time. So I'm saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, start off first with a woman overcome. If you start off with the want to, God will give you what you need. God bless y'all. Maybe someone here today who heard something that lets you know that you wanted to be an overcomer. You wanted to live an overcoming life. And if you're here today, and you made up in your mind that through Jesus you want to have victory. Yeah. You want to be more than a conqueror. You want to live in an overcoming life. If you're here today, you ought to come. Jesus said, come. That's what he said. He said, come. Whosoever will, Let him come. come. That's what you got to do. You got to come. You, 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 if you're going to be saved or if you're going to live a victorious life, if you're going to if you're going to escape the wrath of God, if you're going to be in the family of God, you got to come. You got to come. And when you come, two things have to be on your mind. Faith in Christ and repentance. You got to come with that. If you didn't come with that, you didn't come. I don't care how long ago it was, how old you was, who the pastor was. If when you came, it wasn't with repentance and faith on your mind, you didn't come. Coming is not just a physical walking down the aisle. Coming is a spiritual undertaking. And when you come, you carry that body down the aisle. But if you, when you come, your spirit got to be filled with repentance and faith. And if that wasn't in your spirit when you came, you need to come today to make sure you came the right way. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Maybe you're here and you you, you not remember this church, but you're saved and you want somewhere where you can plug in, where you can learn and grow, where you know if you're here today, you know the word gonna come uncompromised. And it's gonna come as 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 it can come as a little child again. And if you're here today and you want to plug into this 
fellowship here at the Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church of Mount Hermon that we call the Double Mountain. Come. Come. We are welcome you here. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Uh, you got a couple of things. Uh, you can cut it off. Yeah, kill it.